Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. This channel provides easy to understand explanations of car mechanisms. The device that distributes engine power to the front and rear wheels is called a transfer case. In the simplest AWD system, one set of gears acts as the transfer case and distributes engine power to the front and rear wheels. There is a major drawback to this system. When a car goes around a curve, just as there is a difference in the rotation speed between the left and right wheels, a difference in rotation speed also occurs between the front and rear wheels. For this reason, when making small turns on well-paved roads, the difference in rotation can cause the car to feel as if the brakes are applied, preventing it from moving forward. This is referred to as the tight corner braking phenomenon. Due to this phenomenon, full-time directly engaged AWD systems cannot be used on paved roads, which is why they are not adopted in passenger cars. The early AWD cars were equipped with part-time AWD, a system that switches between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. The rear output shaft, directly connected to the transmission, always drives the rear wheels. By engaging the front output shaft with the rear output shaft, the engine output is also transmitted to the front wheels. Previously, this selection operation was performed using a selector lever through cables or rods. But now, electric or pneumatic systems are being used. However, it's a hassle to switch to 4WD every time you encounter rough terrain, and then switch back to 2WD when you return to paved roads. That's why a center differential was introduced, to absorb the difference in speed between the front and rear wheels. In this video, terms such as differential, limited slip differential, torsion, viscous coupling, planetary gear, and understeer, will appear later on. This video won't go into detail about these terms. So, if you'd like to learn more, I've prepared other videos. Please check them out. The links are in the description. Let's get back to the topic. Just as the differential gear absorbs the rotational difference between the left and right driven wheels, using the same device in the transfer case can also absorb the rotational difference between the front and rear wheels. This makes it easy to use a WD cars on both paved roads and rough terrain. Until the 1970s. AWD systems were used for off-road four-wheel drive cars, designed for rough terrain. These are what we now call, cross-country 4x4s, or SUVs. In 1980, Audi adopted a center differential AWD system, with the aim of enhancing stability while driving on paved roads. However, this resulted in handling issues, particularly with strong understeer. If we consider the traction of the tires to be 100, only a combined total of 100 can be used for both longitudinal and lateral forces. The video, Oversteer, Understeer and Cornering Force, explains this in detail. For example, if 40% of traction force are used in the acceleration direction, 60% of traction force can be used in the lateral direction. Conversely, if 80% of traction force are used in the deceleration direction, only 20% of traction force can be used in the lateral direction. In AWD cars, during both acceleration and deceleration, a longitudinal force from engine output or engine braking is applied. As a result, the lateral traction force generated by the front tires is weak, leading to stronger understeer. To improve this, it is necessary to reduce the engine output distributed to the front wheels. In other words, the torque distribution between the front and rear should be unequal. In 1991, Subaru adopted an uneven distribution differential system. The center differential of this system consists of two sets of planetary gear set. Engine output is input to the sun gear A through the input shaft. The planetary pinion A and B are fixed on the same axis and are connected to the planetary carrier. The planetary carrier outputs to the front wheels, while the sun gear B outputs to the rear wheels. To explain uneven torque distribution, imagine lifting the car so that all four wheels are free. The sun gear A has 33 teeth. The planetary pinions of both A and B have 21 teeth. 
In the sun gear B has 18 teeth. Lock the front wheels in some way. This prevents the planetary carrier from rotating. Since the planetary carrier is stationary, the sun gear A rotates the planetary pinion A. Based on the gear ratio, the rotation speed of the planetary pinion A is increased to 33 over 21, relative to the sun gear A. Since the planetary pinion B rotates at the same speed as the planetary pinion A, the sun gear B is increased to a speed of 21 over 18 relative to the planetary pinion B. As a result, by calculating 33 divided by 21 multiplied by 21 divided by 18, the output to the rear wheel speed is increased to approximately 1.83 times the input shaft speed. Since the speed and torque transmitted by the gear are inversely related, when the speed increases to approximately 1.83 times, the torque decreases to approximately 0.55 times. This means that a torque of 0.45 is required to lock the planetary carrier. In other words, this differential transmits 55% of the input torque to the rear wheels and 45% to the front wheels. The uneven torque distribution system, adopted in the Audi RS5 in 2010, is more intuitively understandable than Subaru's system. The engine output is transmitted to the four pinions via the input shaft. The four pinions mesh with the rear output gear and the front output gear. Let's take a look from the other side as well. The input shaft and pinions, the front output gear and front output shaft, the rear output gear and rear output shaft. It has a structure similar to a differential installed between the left and right drive wheels. But the major difference is that the two output gears have different diameters. The distance from the center of the input shaft to the point where the rear output gear and pinion mesh is large, while the distance from the center of the input shaft to the point where the front output gear and pinion mesh is smaller. As a result, the torque transmitted to the rear wheels is larger, while the torque transmitted to the front wheels is smaller. AWD cars aren't perfect either. In a car equipped with open differentials in the center, front, and rear, if one wheel loses traction completely, all the engine power is transmitted to that wheel, making it impossible for the car to move. To avoid this issue, various differential limiting devices are used in AWD cars. The combination of these devices varies depending on the automaker and model, so this video will introduce some of them. The simplest method is to add a locking mechanism to the center differential. In some off-road trial competition cars, locking mechanisms may be added to the center, front, and rear differentials. In rally or race track competition cars, mechanical limited slip differential may be used. Depending on the conditions, they may be installed not only in the center but also in the rear and front. In the 1980s, some models introduced viscous coupling limited slip differentials for the center differential. Nissan developed models that used viscous coupling for the center, front, and rear. But once electronically controlled systems were introduced, viscous systems were no longer used in sports models. However, even today, there are still models of regular passenger cars that distribute engine output to the rear wheels using only a viscous coupling without a center differential. This system normally distributes engine output to the front wheels, only sending power to the rear wheels when the front wheels slip. In 1989, Nissan equipped the R32 Skyline GTR with a system that featured an electronically controlled multi-plate clutch instead of a center differential. This system was able to control the torque distribution between the front and rear wheels from 0 to 100 to 50 to 50. The use of electronic control for AWD systems began from this point onward. In the next generation Type R33, in addition to this, the rear differential was also equipped with an electronically controlled multi-plate clutch. There are also models equipped with an electronically controlled multi-plate clutch in the center differential. The systems of Subaru and Audi mentioned earlier also feature electronically controlled clutches in their uneven torque distribution differentials, allowing them to control the engine output distribution to the front and rear wheels depending on the situation. Previously, the control of the multi-plate clutch was hydraulic. 
but in recent years, systems using electric motors with superior responsiveness to control the multi-plate clutch have also been employed. Due to maintenance and noise issues, mechanical limited slip differentials are difficult to use in production cars. So, some models adopt torsion-type limited slip differentials. In recent years, hybrid and plug-in hybrid vehicles have introduced systems where the engine drives only the front wheels, while an electric motor drives the rear wheels as needed. In some high-performance models based on rear-wheel drive, the engine powers the rear wheels, while the electric motor drives the front wheels. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. We'll see you in the next video.